So in this next example, use Taylor's theorem to expand cos pi over 6 plus h as far as the term in h cubed, hence evaluate cos 30.9 degrees. Now, for you to use Taylor's theorem, you can see here we have cos. If pi over 6 is x, it's like we are expanding cos x plus x, isn't it? So this is a function. This is a function x plus h. So we've been given the function x plus h to be equals to cos x plus h. Meaning our x is where the x pi over 6 is the x. Are you seeing that? Are we together? So if f of x plus h is equals to cos x plus h, then it means that f of x is equals to what? When h is 0, it means f of x is equals to cos cos x. Are we together? So it means when we are going to expand as far as the term in h cube, then what does that imply? It implies we differentiate up to the third derivative, isn't it? So if f of x is cos x, then the first derivative of f of x, if you differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x, isn't it? Then if you differentiate f of x for the second time, negative, you factorize outside, if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x, isn't it? So cos x times this negative, you get negative cos x. Are we together? Then if you differentiate f of x for the third time, you take negative, you factorize negative outside, isn't it? So if you differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x. Then you multiply by this negative, isn't it? Good. Very good. So you get sine x. Negative into negative sine x is sine x. Very good. So after that, you have to know how do we expand the function f of x plus h, isn't it? You know very well you want to do really do when you have a function f of x plus h to be equal to f of x to be equal to f of a. So when we are starting from f of x plus h, meaning we took we take this part, isn't it? Okay. So we are going to for you to expand f of x plus h, we start from f of f of x. Are we together? <laughs> so it implies the function f of x plus h, if we expand the Taylor series, you are supposed to start from f of x. Are you seeing that? Yeah. You're supposed to start from f of x. We saw how the formula was coming about. That's just an algorithm of mastering, isn't it? So it means the first one here is f of x, then you, you leave space, isn't it? Then you differentiate it for the first time, f prime of x, then plus you leave space, then you differentiate it for the second time, f double prime of x, then you leave space, then you differentiate it for the third time, f fifth prime of x, because that is where we have a term in h cube, isn't it? So after you've done that, it means when you differentiate it for the first time, that means you have h power 1 over 1 factorial, isn't it? If you differentiate it twice, that means you have h squared over 2, over 2 factorial, isn't it? If you differentiate it twice, that means you have h cubed over 3, 3 factorial. So you've expanded the function f of x plus h up to the term in h cubed. Then you now substitute. Your function f of x plus h is what? Is cos x plus h. This is cos x plus h. So where there is f of x, you put the value of f of x. You found it is what? Cos x, isn't it? Cos x, then h raised to power 1 over 1 factorial, see that's just h. Yes. Then what is f prime of x? What did you find to be f prime of x? Negative sine x, isn't it? Yes. So negative sine x times h, you get negative h sine. Are we together? We have simplified. Then f double prime of x, what did you get? Negative cos x. So this is negative cos x times h squared. You get negative, negative h squared equals x then over 2 factorial is 2. Are you seeing you are simplifying as you are moving? Then you go again, f triple prime of x, what did you get it to be? Sin x, isn't it? So sin x times h cubed divided by 3 factorial, isn't it? That is going to be plus h cubed sin x over 3 factorial is, is 6. Are we together? So you see, this is an expansion of cos x plus h. But they don't need an expansion of cos x plus h. They need an expansion of cos pi over 6 plus h. Are you seeing that? Meaning where there is x, you put pi over 
pi over 6. So we are going to have an expansion of pi over 6 plus x. It's going to be what? It is going to be cos pi over 6. Are you seeing that? Cos pi over 6 minus minus x in pi over 6. Anywhere you see x, you put the value of x, which is pi over 6. Then minus x squared over 2 cos pi over 6. Then plus h cubed sine pi over 6 divided by 6. Isn't it? Are we together? So have you seen, we found an expansion of cos pi over 6 plus h, isn't it? Now, after getting this expansion of cos pi over 6 plus h, what have we been told? So, the best thing you can now do, because you are getting it into three decimal places, you can now get these values, isn't it? Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. You get these values, what is cos pi over? Pi over 6, what is sine pi over? Pi over 6, are we together? Are we together? Yeah. So, given space, we have space here. So you can see, cos pi over 6, that is, pi is 180 divided by 6, cos 30 degrees. The calculator will give you 0.86, isn't it? Then sine pi over 6, that is like sine 30 degrees, isn't it? The calculator will give you 0.5. Remember, when you are putting pi over 6, you must set the calculator in pi radius. I see, when you are dealing with any series, be it Taylor series or McLaurin series, you only work with pi radians. Have you seen that? Because if h is in pi radians, you cannot give the other ones in degrees, isn't it? Everything, if you find cos, cos of this x, it will be in pi radians, meaning h must also be in pi radians. You cannot give its value in degrees. Are you together? Everything must be pi, pi radians. So we found where there is cos pi over 6, you put 0 0.8, 6, 6, and where there is in pi over 6, you put 0. 0.5, isn't it? So what do we now have? What do we now have? Let us write it out here. Cos cos pi over 6 is 0 0.866 sine pi over 6 is 0 0.5. So let us now utilize this space. The largest space we can use to rewrite this. So here we have cos cos pi over 6 plus h to be equal to cos pi over 6. What have we found to be cos pi over 6? 0 0.8 6, 6, isn't it? Then it is minus minus h sin pi over 6. Sin pi over 6 you find is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times h is minus 0 0.5 h, isn't it? Then you move on. Cos pi over 6 is 0 0.866, isn't it? If you divide by this 2, which is in the denominator, 0 0.433, isn't it? So it is h, it is minus, minus, minus we start with the number part, minus 0 0.433 h squared, because our h squared, this one is 0 0.866 divided by 2, isn't it? 0 0.433 h squared. Are we together? Then you move to this one, sine pi over 6 is 0 0.5 divided by 6. 0 0.5 divided by 6? 0 0.033. It is now positive 0 point? 0 0.83. 0 0.83 to 3 decimal places, isn't it? 0 0.83, then it is times this h cube. Are we together? Yes. So you see, we've now found an expansion for cos pi over 6 plus h, what they wanted, isn't it? Yes. We found an expansion of cos pi over 6 plus, plus h. Now, they want us to use this expansion to evaluate cos 30 point 9 degrees, cos 30 point 9 degrees. Now you ask yourself, this must be separated for you to have pi over 6 plus h. Pi over 6 is 1 divided by 6, meaning pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Are you seeing? So it means you remove 30 degrees from 30.9 degrees. Are you seeing that? Because pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So it means this is equal to cos. 30 degrees plus 0 0.9 degrees because this 30 degrees is the pi over 6. Are we together? Yes. Everything must be changed into pi radians. You don't work with anything in degrees. Are we together? So start with this 30 degrees. What do you get? You'll find that cos 30.9 degrees is equal to cos 30 degrees. If you change it to pi radians, you divide by, you multiply by pi and you divide pi over 1 inch, isn't it? 
it is your pi over 6 we have. Then plus 0 0.9 degrees, if you change into pi radians, that is 0 0.9 times pi divided by 1 inch, isn't it? Can you multiply that? Remember, 180 degrees is 1 pi radians, isn't it? Therefore, 0 0.9 degrees is how many pi radians? It is pi times 0 0.9 divided by 1 inch. So what do you get to be that bad 0 0.9 degrees in pi radians? Just the same way you do that with 30 degrees. Then 30 degrees is what? So it is times 30 degrees, so 30 goes here, 6 will remain with pi over 6. Is? See, if it is already in radians, then it is in radians, you don't convert. It is not in radians, this is 30.9 degrees, this is in degrees, meaning you must convert it into pi radians, it's when you can use the series. The series must be pi radians, the value of it must be pi radians, are you seeing that? Because you can see here, it is x plus h, meaning this h which is 0 0.9 degrees, it must be pi radians, not degrees, are we together? So 0 0.9 degrees, if you change it to pi radians, it is 0 0.9 pi over 1 inch, isn't it? Which is, what is 0 0.9 pi divided by 1 inch? 0 0.016 0 0.016 57 0 point 0 0.0157 7, isn't it? So after that, we now go for you now to evaluate cos 30.9 degrees, you come and write it therefore implies that our cos 30.9 degrees is what? This is the same as cos pi over 6 plus h meaning cos pi over 6 here we have cos pi over 6 plus h are you see? Yeah. so it means our value of h is what 0 0.051 0 0.0157 isn't it so where there is h in cos pi over 6 plus h you put 0 0.0157 that is the value of h isn't it so this one will be equal to what cos 30.9 degrees will be what it will be cos pi over 6 plus h, but our h is that, isn't it? So we found it here. We found it to be 0 0.866 minus 0 0.5 h, but the h value is what? 0 0.0157, then it is minus 0 0.433 h squared, but the value of h is what? 0 0.0157 squared, isn't it? Then it is plus. 0 0.0 0 0.083 h cube but the value of h in this 30.9 degrees is what? it is 0 0.0157 then that h is cube isn't it? so if you evaluate this in 3 decimal places what do you get? remember your h is acting like answer isn't it? isn't it? if you say h is answer you say 0 0.0157 is supposed to answer then you go 0 0.866 minus 0 0.5 answer minus 0 0.433 answer squared plus 0 0.083 answer cube, isn't it? If you let the value of h to be answer from the calculator. What do you have in three decimal places? So you have 0 0.8? 0 0.85? 85, three decimal places. Yeah, that is. 0 0.858. Yeah. So that is cos 30.9 degrees. So can you confirm with the calculator if the exact value of 30.9 degrees is 0 0.858? Because this is the approximated value from the Taylor's theorem. What have you found? It is almost there, isn't it? All the same, isn't it? Very good. Then it means we found the right calculation.